Hello everyone, welcome back to another exciting video of Top Movies Recap. Today, I'm going to show you a sci-fi action film from 2021 titled Outside the Wire. A civil war in Ukraine between Russian separatists and local resistance groups drives the United States to send in peacekeepers at the start of the film, which takes place in 2036. At this period, military robots were frequently deployed in the fighting field and during one operation, a squad of U.S. Marines and robot troops known as GUMPS. Harp is a drone pilot who appears to be playing a game on his computer screen when he sees a truck crossing the overpass. The ensuing photograph plainly reveals that this is an armed vehicle, and the tank will threaten everyone. Harp requested attack instructions. While the commander hesitated since the army was waiting for the two imprisoned men to be rescued, Procrastination was not an option at this point. Harp had to drop Hellfire missiles on the other truck to save the remaining 38 Marines, resulting in a massive explosion that killed two men who did not have time to leave. Harp is being questioned by a U.S. military tribunal about why he did not follow orders. Sharp says he is simply considering the big picture in order to help as many people as possible. He was brought to Camp Nathaniel, a U.S. base of operations in Ukraine, where he was assigned to Captain Leo, according to the court. Rain Harp stepped out of the plane, frustrated because he was already at this new barracks and had to be checked by a robot before joining the team because Colonel Eckhart knew about Harp's background. He mocked the fact that he had arbitrarily attacked and killed his comrade. She told Harp where Captain Leo was, but she didn't tell him that Lee didn't like them. He proceeded via the robot repair room, then to the top of the building, where he discovered Captain Leo listening to classical music. The captain was aware of his condition, so he did not allow him to report, but instead hauled him along to fulfill his task right away. The mission now is to deliver the vaccine to a refugee camp's infirmary. Soon after, in the dressing room, Harp noticed a strange sight. His captain was a biochemical robot. Leo explained that he was an original form in a secret army project that only the colonel and Harp knew about. Harp and Captain Leo embarked on their first mission. He had just arrived at the car when the soldiers hauled him back and beat him up before he realized what was going on. A captain, who proved out to be the captain of the marine, came out and stated Harp as a scum and that the two individuals who died yesterday were just 19 years old. When Captain Leo appeared, they immediately withdrew their troops to the vehicle to prepare to escort Harp and Captain Leo to many missions along the way. Along the way, Leo began to question and tease Harp about his love life before telling him to trust Leo to save his own life. While traveling, the convoy received a phone call saying that an army supply truck had been attacked by a local militia. The commander immediately ordered the robot soldiers to get off the car. Captain Leo immediately told his commander to tell his troops to lower their guns and Leo stepped forward, dropping his gun and ammunition on the ground, arriving to negotiate with the militia. Unfortunately, one of the stones hit a robot and it responded by shooting a civilian in the leg. Both sides were tense and pointed their guns at each other. They exchanged handshakes and placed their guns on the table. The army let the militia take the supplies on the vehicle in exchange for allowing the army to pass. Then the robot soldiers were attacked from above with shot and exploded soldiers and robots raised their guns to counterattack. the two sides fought fiercely. This was Harp's first time on the battlefield, without Harp he would have died here. Captain Leo immediately discussed with the commander that his group would withdraw first and that the commander's army would remain to fight two battles. They traveled through the woods and came across a massive hole full of people's bodies with their faces covered. Harp was terrified, but Leo encouraged him and ordered him to keep going. They made it past the refugee camp and to the hospital, where they completed their goal of delivering the goods. While handing over the vaccine to the doctor, they were ambushed by a bearded man who climbed on the roof and shot two people, breaking the hospital glass and sending everyone into a panic. He shot the doctors here and Leo ran to catch him, putting his hand on the wound in his neck to allow the blood to flow, and asked him where his leader was. He didn't say anything and Leo let the people here beat him to death. Harp wasn't used to this kind of interrogation, so he thought he should go back to the barracks and ask for reinforcements. Leo urged him to get out of the car and walk back to the barracks alone and see how long he could last. Harp was told by Leo. They went to an orphanage to find Leo's contact in the yard since the villain was keeping an eye on the nuclear bombs left over from the military base. If they were to find the code to trigger those nuclear bombs, the conclusion of this war would undoubtedly be even more awful. The children were playing with the robots, and Leo sat down to play with them. The headmaster, Sophia, came in and took them upstairs to a room where she gave them vital information. She said that the leader of the insurgents was looking for the location and had obtained the code to build the atomic bomb to attack. Based on Sophia's clues, the two find an arms dealer in the black market. Captain Leo kills all of this guy's juniors in a matter of minutes and captures him to interrogate him. According to the arms dealer, rebel leader Victor Koval is stealing the code for a nuclear bomb from a bank. 
Captain Leo took the dealer's car and weapons and drove to the bank after shooting down the trader Harp. I was driving to the bank when I came across this. Harp believed it was important to report to the base but Leo persuaded him otherwise. Leo gave Harp a knife and told him to remove the transmitter from his body to prevent the villains from tracking his location. He also gave Harp a piece of plastic to patch it up. The electrical circuits were reconnected and his body was covered in skin like a human body. But a woman's scream was heard, Leo ordered Harp to defend them and he alone hurried to fight and eliminate most of the villains. But then a robot they bought on the black market arrived and shot at him. He promptly ordered Harp to toss a grenade for him, fired one shot, and destroyed the robot. Not forgetting to inform Harp to summon reinforcements from the base to assist Leo. He continued to escape but was pursued by another robot. The robot chased him down and fired shots along the wall where Leo was hiding. He threw a grenade at the robot and then fired a shot at it to blow it up. Harp established touch with the troops and took use of the opportunity to lead the hostages out of the bank. When the robot army's reinforcements came, the rebels kidnapped the remaining prisoners, making it impossible for the army to attack. The two teams' robots began to deploy offensive formations. When the army robot fired the first shot at the rebel commander, a furious combat ensued with both sides firing bullets immediately. This is a fierce conflict between the robots. Both squads sustained significant losses at this time, and Harp led the captives to a safe location before being instructed to evacuate by his superiors, since a drone was on its way to destroy them. The location Leo had just defeated the rebel group holding the nuclear bomb code to the roof when he noticed the drone flying over and preparing to drop the bomb. Harp returned to save another girl just in time to run into a house to avoid bombs when bombs began to fall and blew up the bank. Harp wakes up in the rubble, picks up the girl, and walks out the bank completely collapsing surrounded by burning corpses. He realized that war isn't just about pressing a button on a screen to drop a bomb, it's also about death and destruction in the smoke. Harp says he doesn't want to be here any longer. He wants to go back to base. Leo told Harp everything. It turned out it was all in Leo's plan. He recruits Harp as a disobedient, only then can he leave the base to carry out his plan. Then, owing to Harp's request for assistance, I used Harp to assist me in removing the US military gear. Eckhart believed Lee had been destroyed, so Leo knocked Harp out and pushed him into the street before going off to find the rebel leader, Victor Koval. Of course, the two have known each other for a long time, and Leo wants Koval to tell him where the nuclear bomb is in exchange for Koval's life because according to Leo's code, America is the greatest threat to world peace. Both of them got into a fight, and Leo used Koval. He eventually used the flagpole to drive it straight into Koval's torso, killing him instantly. He then uses their computers to figure out where the nuclear weapons are and he guides them to them. Meanwhile, Harp wakes up on the side of the road having been grabbed by two guys and subsequently jailed. He was tied up to a location where he was blindfolded, and after speaking with Safia, he learns that Captain Leo wants to fire a nuclear bomb in the United States. After contemplating for a while, he begs Safia to free him since she believes it is too late to stop Leo. Harp returns to base to meet Colonel Eckhart and inform him of Leo's intentions. Harp informed his superiors of how Leo had abused him. Harp was not deterred from contacting his crewmates and using the plane to look for the car which shocked Eckhart. Harp answers, let me handle this, and the colonel hands him a gun with incendiary rounds that can penetrate armored vehicles as well as a car, which he drives after Leo to an abandoned facility where nuclear bombs are hidden. Harp snuck inside and found the well where the nuclear bomb was. By this time, Leo had arrived first to unlock the code and use it to get to the nuclear bomb launch site. He was already hiding there and easily overpowered Harp tried to persuade Leo, but he didn't listen. Harp shot Leo in the leg, Harp was knocked unconscious by Leo. With only five minutes left, Leo crawled to the nuclear well and started the nuclear bomb. Meanwhile, Colonel Eckhart had ordered Bale to prepare to fly to the nuclear well and drop bombs on it. The colonel called Harp to wake him up, then took a gun with an incendiary bullet and fired continuously at Leo. Even a strong robot like Leo could not withstand the power of the bullet, and he was seriously injured and soon fell down. When he heard there was 1 minute 30 seconds left, Harp decided to notify the commander that Leo had been found. The commander confirmed and prepared the bomb to drop. The colonel repeatedly urged Harp to run out, and Leo chased Harp away, Harp put down his gun, and ran out as quickly as he could before the nuclear bomb went off. At the same time, drones dropped bombs on the factory, the nuclear weapon was neutralized at the last second, and Harp escaped, and returned to base like a hero. We hope you enjoyed our today's video. If you did like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with the latest and interesting videos.